Hey there, in this video we are going to look at solving rational equations, including looking at cases where you end up with extraneous solutions. So, rational equations are equations that have algebraic fractions in them, rational expressions in them, like this equation down here has a couple of rational expressions in it. This one over here has one. Now how we're going to solve these things is by multiplying both sides of the equation by something to clear the fractions. And that's something that we're going to multiply by is a common denominator, preferably the lowest common denominator that we find with the expressions in that fraction. Now, before we start, the other thing that we have to think about is sometimes we're going to encounter extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions are solutions that emerge during the process of solving, but are not valid solutions to the original equation. And we'll see what that means as we work through some here. Okay, so we'll try these first couple here. This equation here has a one rational expression in it, which has an x on the bottom as that denominator. As with many other equations you've solved before, you work with both sides of the equation as long as you do the same operation on both sides of the equation. You end up with a new equivalent equation that's simpler or on your way to solving it. The first key step here is going to be we want to clear out this fraction. We know that we can multiply both sides of an equation by the same thing and get an equivalent equation. What we can multiply both sides by here is actually x. If we multiply both sides by x, whatever x is, we get a new equation that is going to be equivalent to this. We're going to get x squared plus x times 12 over x. x times 12 over x, the x's are going to cancel and you're just going to get 12 it clears out that fraction. And on this side you get 7x. To solve this you gotta think how, what kind of an equation is this? Is it a linear? Is it a quadratic? What do I do? This has an x squared and an x term so you're not gonna be able to do it by isolation. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to use factoring or the quadratic formula. Either way you need to put everything on the same side. So I'm gonna write that as x squared minus 7x plus 12 equals zero. When you have it like that, I would always try factoring first. In this case it works. You get x minus 3 times x minus 4 equals zero, which tells you that x can be 3 or 4. Those are the two solutions there. Now, I mentioned extraneous solutions up here. What we're going to need to do here is think about the answers we get and whether they are extraneous. In other words, we're going to need to think about the restrictions on the original equation. This original equation, this expression has restrictions on it. The restriction on that expression is that x cannot be 0 because the denominator cannot be 0. The denominator cannot be 0 there, so the only value of x before we even start this, that x we know x can't be is it can't be 0. The odd time you're going to get where you get a solution that ends up including one of those and you're going to have to reject it. Here we don't need to. Both of these are okay. They check out because they're not zero. Let's look at the second one here. What we need to multiply through by there is we need to multiply through by x minus 4. If I multiply both sides of that equation by x minus 4, so if I multiply this by x minus 4 and I multiply this side by x minus 4, I can write it like this and put a big x minus 4 beside it. Or if you'd rather, you can put x minus 4 times this term and x minus 4 times this term, whatever you like. This is actually easy to multiply out because this and this cancel and you just have a 4. This is actually easy to multiply out too because this and this cancel and you just have an x. This 
if we multiply it out, we have plus 2 times x minus 4. And now you have to think about how do I solve that. Once I've cleared out all those fractions, a good first step here would be to get rid of that bracket, 2x minus 8. Now I only have x terms there. There's no x squared terms, so this one I can do by isolation. I can put that x and 2x together to make 3x. I can move the 8 over and get 12 over here. I can divide both sides by 3 and get 4. Now again, before we circle that and say that that's our answer, what we need to do is look back at the original equation and think about what restrictions there are. So I'll take away my scribbling on there. This actually has the restriction that x cannot be 4 because x minus 4 cannot be 0. If x was 4, this would be 0. So if since this is the restriction on that variable, and that's actually the solution that we got, we are going to need to reject this. This solution is not actually a solution to the original equation. It is a solution to this and all of these equations, but it's not a solution to the original equation. Here's why that happens. In the original equation, you had x minus 4 on the bottom. When you multiply everything by x minus 4, what you're actually multiplying by is you're multiplying by 0, right? If x was 4 here, and you were multiplying by x minus 4, you'd be multiplying by 0. When you multiply things by 0, things that are not equal can become equal. Or an example of that, just think of any two numbers here, like 3 is definitely not equal to 5. If I multiply both sides of that by 0, right, times 0, times 0, I get 0 and 0, now they are equal. Multiplying by 0 is an operation that can make two things that are not equal become equal. So when I'm multiplying by x minus 4 all the way across here, you create an equation that includes a solution it's not actually a solution to the original equation. It creates a quality here that's not actually there. All right. So what to write in the answer box? If you have to write something, you say there's no solution to this equation. There's no value that makes those things equal. We got one thing, but we had to throw it away, so there's nothing. Let's look at two more. In this equation, we actually have two different denominators involved. We have x and x plus 3. We're going to need to multiply by both of those to clear out all the fractions involved here. We're going to need to multiply by x and x plus 3 for each term. You can write it all at once here if you want, times x, x plus 3, times x, x plus 3, times x, and x plus 3. A little squished there, but it's all in there. Let's look at this first one. In that one, multiplying by x and x plus 3, the x is going to cancel. That x is going to cancel with that, and you're just going to have 2 times x plus 3. For this one, the x plus 3 is going to cancel, right? And you're just going to have x times x left there. Let's write it like that for now. We can multiply it out after. And here, nothing's going to cancel because there's no denominator on this to cancel with either of those other things. So you're actually going to have both of them, x times x plus 3. So you've cleared out the fractions. Whatever the denominator is disappears out of that fraction because it cancels. So we have a new equation here that's equivalent to the first one, but we've cleared out the fractions. So if we multiply these things out here, 2x plus 6 equals x squared minus x squared minus 3x. Minus x times positive 3 is minus 3x. That looks like we have x squared terms and x terms in it, so you'd think maybe you have to work with it as a quadratic, but actually x squared minus x squared subtracts to 0, and all you have over here is negative 3x. So actually this one you can do by isolation. I would move that 3x to that side to make 5x plus 6 equals 0. I'd move the 6 to the other side and make it 5x equals negative 6. Or for a solution of negative 6 fifths, or if you like decimals better, negative 1.2. But before we're done and we say that that's our final answer, we need to look at restrictions on that original equation. We have 
denominator of x and x plus 3 there. So x cannot be 0 or x cannot be negative 3. That's our restriction on those expressions. This is not one of those values, so this checks out okay. That's our solution to our equation. You could substitute it in there for x, just like any other equation, and check that it works and that both sides are equal to each other. All right, let's look at this last one here. Let's give myself a slight bit more space here. Before we start, we're gonna look at the restrictions on this thing. Uh, to start with here, you can see that this and this mean that you're gonna at least have two restrictions. X cannot be five or it cannot be two because those are the two values that make those denominators zero. To see what this is, we're gonna to need to think about this in factored form here. We're gonna to need to write this in factored form. So what I'm gonna do here is write this as three. This thing factors to x minus two and x minus five, that fraction. So actually there's no new restrictions. These are the only two restrictions that we have to think about. We're gonna come back to that at the end. So let's just write the rest of it again here, but give ourselves some more space to work with. 1 over x minus 5 plus x over x minus 2. What we're going to multiply everything by here to clear out those fractions is we need to multiply by both of those factors, x minus 2 and x minus 5. So if I multiply this side by x minus 2 and x minus 5, I need to multiply the other side by x minus 2 and x minus 5. So I'm going to multiply each term, x minus 2, x minus 5. This is x minus 2, x minus 5. Let's do the easy side. This is the easiest one here because both of these things cancel with both of those, which is why you're doing it to clear out these fractions and you just have a three there. For this one, the x minus two cancels with the x minus two and you just have x times x minus five. We'll multiply that out in a second. And on this first one, the x minus five cancels with the x minus five and we just have x minus two times one. So I'll just write x minus two. Next step would be to write it with this bracket expanded, x squared minus 5x equals 3. You have to assess how you're going to solve this now. The fact that it has x squared and x terms in it means we're going to need to solve it as a quadratic by factoring or quadratic formula. So I'm going to gather everything on one side to do that. I'm going to put the x squared term first. I have minus 5x plus 1x gives me minus... 4x and I have this minus 2 here. If I move that 3 over I get x squared minus 4x minus 5 equals 0 and I need to think about whether that factors. It does. x minus 5, x plus 1 are the two factors for that and that means that the solutions that this is telling us our five or negative one. But again, before we put a big circle around that and say that that's our answer, we need to look back at our restriction. Remember our restriction up here was X can't be five or two because those are the values that make the denominator zero, which is means that those expressions are undefined. So the fact that X can't be five or two and one of our solutions is five means we're gonna have to reject this one and our solution is actually just this single number all by itself. There's only one valid solution for that equation and it's negative one. So our solution we're gonna say is this. All right, so that's a look at solving rational equations by multiplying through by common denominator to clear out all the fractions as well as looking for extraneous solutions that might come up.